So it's gonna be cold. It's gonna get cold out here. Oh geez, it is really freaking cold. Hello, crap ass weather. Oh man. Gotta hate winter. Hate it so much. Everything's got a coating armor of ice. Oh, that's nice and slick. Slice right through the air. Oh. My God. oh. See that uh chemical guy's hydro slick coating is doing a pretty good job. Oh, and just wipe the stuff right off. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Surprisingly, I didn't even hear my normal chain rattle this morning. And usually it does do that. Usually it does rattle when I start it up. I did not hear it this morning, oddly enough. But the weather the way it is, it probably shouldn't be going out. Harper Freight's got a lot of really good sales going on right now. Uh, a couple small things that I can pick up pretty cheap that I am going to need eventually. So I figured it'd be, you know, worth a trip today. And also, I think it would be a good opportunity to talk about a uh, really annoying thing that I've been dealing with with uh, the SHO here. It's always something with this car, I tell you what. It's always, it's like just a little annoying things that just can't be good for a day. And it's, in this instance, it's not really the car's fault. It really isn't. Um, like, it, everything's good now and, you know, it is a good car, but this is just one of them really annoying things that just happen, I guess. I don't know. But let me tell you, I went with Gearhead for the uh, Auto Octane tunes, and they have been really good tunes. And I'll always run that as my uh, forever daily tune because of the compensation for Octane. Not because it's so much that, but it's also because it's just, it's got good, you know, daily characteristics. It, the car shifts good. Um, it's just a nice tune and it gets, you know, pretty much the same gas mileage as it would factory. Needless to say, it's gonna be my daily tune. I would love to have a tune that I can just go to when I want to unleash the full potential of this car and really set some good times in the quarter, you know, go have some fun, whatever it is. And uh, that's where I'm at with things. You're probably asking yourself, well, Kirk, I thought you did have a tune. Didn't you have an E30 tune, this, that, and the other? Yeah, I do, actually. I have two E30 tunes. And this is where the problem lies, unfortunately. So, Kirk, why is that a problem? What's so wrong with your E30 tunes? Well, the one tune, actually, I don't have a problem with. So, the one E30 tune I have is probably the most powerful tune I have. I don't know if it's the fastest tune I have. I have yet to actually um, do tests with it and I will eventually once weather is more cooperative than it is today to see if how faster it is than the uh, 93 tune I'm currently running. The 93 tune I have now is I think I, I bested 12.7 full weight like I mean like full weight then some like there was junk in the car and three quarters of a tank of gas or whatever so like I really didn't even give myself a proper you know attempt to try to get a good time with the 93 I could probably get another tenth or two faster with the E30 tune um, it has a lot more torque down low so my 60 foots as long as I don't get a stupid amount of wheel spin should definitely be a lot better and uh, yeah that would definitely improve my overall time. And I think I could probably do like a 12.3 maybe. Uh, that'd be that'd be pretty solid. And the thing is with that tune, it's only, so it's like more timing, but not more boost. So, cause it was, it's to play nicely with the stock, you know, fuel pump, but I am also spraying meth. So I did have another E30 tune made where it's, the same amount of timing I think so it's like max timing but it's also the same amount of boost as you would get in a normal 93 tune so it's like 15 psi is where it's set and whatever max timing you know I guess max I don't know if max total timing or like how how aggressive you can ramp into timing I'm not exactly sure about the details 
Um, I was told that it was max boost, max timing. And spraying the meth was to keep everything safe. I'm not meth dependent, so I guess that means there was room for more. But here comes the best part of this story. Um, and it's kind of, the, the downside is, that tune theoretically should be putting this car well over 400 wheel horsepower, and it should be my fastest tune. Here's the problem. I can't get the car to run right with that tune, no matter what. Me replacing the knock sensor was because of this tune. Me replacing um, the fuel pump driver module was because of this tune. Me going through all the trouble that I've gone through with this car is because of this tune. And I'm not sure what is wrong, but I can't get anything to work right with this tune. <laughs> while replacing the knock sensor seemed to help. You know, it's like these things were issues. I'll still get like excessive amounts of positive knock. Um, I'll still get, you know, just a lot of very strange things. And it's like the last time I ran this tune, you know, I was actually doing some troubleshooting. Again, I was able to finally get my OAR to stick, uh, you know, to be maxed out at negative point, 0 0.96 and you know, great. The car still did not feel nearly as fast as it did with just a, the lower boost E32. And then the last time I ran tune, I kept getting this, this odd surging at wide open throttle. It's like the torque converter kept like locking up and not locking up. I don't know what is wrong with this tune. I've talked with the tuner. I'm not going to say names. I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. I'm not gaslighting anything. This has just been my experience with this particular tuner. And uh, we'll leave it at that. They requested a data log, which I understand. I, I definitely understand. But I can't cap. Like, it wouldn't do it on cue all the time. And whatever reason, every time I tried to capture it on the data log, I would go hit record. And it wouldn't do it, so it just it just made it nearly impossible for me to get a data log of it. I was monitoring my um, X4 and and the PIDs, and I and I was monitoring things like I was watching it like a hawk. And there was a lot of things I noticed. I noticed that the the way the car is calculating load is very awkward. So it's like quarter throttle, it would be the same load as if it was three quarter throttle. And it was just very strange. And I talked to my tuner about this and it just, it never seemed to actually result in figuring out what the problem was. It just was always, you gotta fix it. And I'm like, okay, well, what is it that I'm trying to fix? You know, I've replaced my knock sensors. I've replaced my plugs. I've checked all my hoses and wires. I've replaced my fuel pump driver module because there was some, some fuel pressure issue. But that really wasn't the big, that wasn't the thing, you know? I've done everything. What, why, what, what more is there to really look into if none of the other tunes I have does it? Why is it that something's wrong with my car still if I don't have the problems with the other tunes? And that's just kind of how it went. It never got to a point where we could figure out why the car is doing it. You know, I even suggested that because of the load, you know, I noticed the fuel pressure was just a little low, like on the highway, if you just want the ease into a throttle to pass someone, and that's where I would get a lot of positive knock. But in sport mode, even with the gear locked in uh, sixth gear, so not even fifth gear, sixth gear, same RPMs, but because you know, the throttle response is sharpened, you know, it quickens how fast the, the uh, car ramps into load, right? So it, I never had issues with it in sport mode, really, not at all. Which is why I ended up buying this damn thing right here. And uh, I will eventually make a, a video on this because I wanted to do some tests. This is one of those devices that basically plugs in between your, your throttle pedal and the harness and basically alters the throttle response before it even gets to the computer. It definitely sharpens the throttle curve and it can get pretty aggressive, so. But that was my theory is, you know, I asked the tuner, hey, can, can you give me, you know, the same throttle response that you have in sport mode, but for drive, you know, that way? Because I kind of like that throttle response anyway, but I don't like the gear hanging that you get in sport mode. You know, I just kind of want the throttle response and still have 
the gears shift the way they do in drive, but he wouldn't do it. He, you know, it was like, it's not gonna make a difference either way, and basically just left it there. So I was pretty upset with that, but I ended up getting this instead to even see if my theory worked, because I was pretty upset at that point, and come to find out, I was slightly correct. So it seems that in drive mode, if I sharpen the throttle response, I would get, I wouldn't get the um, positive knock nearly as much if I did if this was set in bypass mode. So there was definitely a correlation there, um, and I think it was a band-aid fix overall. But I, once again, I'm just upset because my tuner didn't want to really work with me in trying to figure this out, and it's only this tune that does it. None of my other tunes, my, my auto octane tunes don't do it, and my other E30 tune doesn't have any issues. It's really a really good driving tune. I'm not doing any more tunes through this tuner anymore, and it's, I really hate to leave it that way, but I'm just not, I'm not happy as, as the consumer, um, and you know, there are other options out there. So, like I said, for my daily tune, for the tune I'm gonna run, all the time when I'm not feeling saucy, it's gonna be the Gearhead Auto Octane. I definitely wanna tailor a really hot tune for this car. That's gonna, oh, okay. Little uh, Volkswagen VR there, VR6. But I definitely wanna get a nice hot tune tailored for this car so I can really try to, you know, see what it's capable of. So I need to get a tuner that's going to be willing to work with me and work with this car and not just kind of like, oh, I'm sorry, it's your car, I can't do nothing about it. There are many great options out there for tuners. Um, I'm highly considering Ortiz. Uh, I think from what I see them do, I think they're gonna be the best bet. So it's definitely one of the companies I wanna consider going forward with another tune in, in this car. Um, the only problem is, it's, so it's like, they are a little expensive compared, right? So, like Gearhead, Gearhead, see that's the thing about Gearhead, I thought it was expensive, but compared, no, Gearhead's actually really cheap. So it's like 150 up front for Gearhead, and $50 for every revision. Um, and the thing is with Ortiz is it's 250 put 10 and it's like one cent revision So it's like a lot of upfront cost But over time you'll save money especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of dialing in Stuff and I think that's where it's gonna be more beneficial to me. It needs to be catered to very specifically um, I'm trying I would love to set records with this car. I would love to set you know stock turbo stock fuel pump records um, and I have a lot of ideas, but I need to have a tuner that's willing to craft a tune around what this car needs. Um, not every car is built the same, not every car runs the same, and uh, this car has definitely proven to be a challenge with tuning, um, and I definitely want to find something and someone who can really pull the best out of this car. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. You know, obviously right now, I'm not gonna be able to do that. I've cut myself so thin financially because I got all these projects going on, trying desperately, you know, busting my tail, you know, taking my chances to get to this YouTube channel to really take off. And, and uh, I've really, really cut myself so thin with my finances. So there's no way I can, you know, uh, think about tuning this car right now with uh with whoever i decide to go with finally got out of harbor freight uh need to get more gloves because of the you know increased use of gloves and i guess then there's the decrease in manufacturing of gloves because of people not being able to work prices of just regular like the nitro mechanics gloves have shot through the freaking roof. Oh my God, thankfully I had some coupons and it put it back down to the price where they used to be. So stocks back up on some gloves because my hands are gonna get very messy with some future projects. Definitely need those. Another thing I wanna talk about real quick uh, before my battery runs out on the GoPro is I do have pretty much almost everything I need to get my 
Fox Body Project really rolling here. As far as I know, the only things I need are uh, injectors and fuel pump. Everything else I have, as far as I know. I definitely want to start doing more with that. And actually, I have a really surprise project with this car um, that is supposed to arrive in the mail today. I'm not sure if it will or not, but... And it's just one of my stupid, crazy ideas that I am not so sure if it'll work. In theory, it works, but in practice, is always a different story. But there's only one way to find out, right? So definitely keep a lookout for that and all the other future updates I have coming on the channel here. It's really hard to get things really moving here in pretty much the, the midst of the winter. Um, here in Maryland, but once things start clearing up, and actually I have a nice window of a few days next week where it's supposed to get nice, and the weather's going to be a lot nicer, and I'll probably be able to get a lot more content put out, you know, because I'll be able to work and do things with the cars that I can't do like on days like today. There's expectations and then reality. They don't, they don't coincide in the same realm, the same dimension. <laughs> But that is it for this vlog. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and if you want to see more content like this, then go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next video.